there! Welcome to episode 134 of the Waveback Music Podcast. My name is Chris. And I'm Matt. And we're here to listen to the most interesting video game music there is. It should come as no surprise to anyone listening to this show that Matt and I love Metroid. But since we've already covered so many of the games, we're going to take some deep dives into the realm of covers and uncommon tunes to celebrate the series' 35th anniversary. Could we have just done Metroid Zero Mission since it's a remake of the first game and that would have made sense? Sure, but we already committed to this, so here we are. Don't step in that phase on puddle, because tonight we will celebrate the 35th anniversary of Metroid. <laughs> How you doing? I am good. How are you? I am also good. It uh, when I was putting the notes together to this show, it, it occurred to me just how much more sense it would have made to be like, why don't we just do zero mission? That would have been so easy. But <laughs> nah, it would have made so much sense. You know, it's kind of like when we realized after we recorded the 360th episode of the Stone Age Gamer podcast, we're like, hey, we probably should have done something about the Xbox 360 of this episode, huh? <laughs> But we didn't. <laughs> There's only going to be one 360th episode. We did we did 64 for the 64th episode. Totally spaced on the 360. Ah, oh, boy. At least you guys are pretty. <laughs> that is true. We definitely have faces for radio. Yep. But Metroid! We're here to celebrate Metroid, and we've got a, a, a whole bunch of music. We're actually recording during the day, which is pretty different for the two of us. Mm-hmm. So, uh... I won't be falling asleep by the end of the episode. That That's going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, so since we've uh, we've gathered together a bunch of tracks from a bunch of different places, uh, we're not going to do our regular Metroid history thing, other than to say that the Famicom Disk System game came out uh, 35 years ago uh, this month, and it's awesome, and we love it, so let's do a little personal history. Matt, what is your... Let's, let's do a quick breakdown of your personal Metroid history. Ooh, lordy. Uh, if you're if you're a fan of the show, you already know how I feel about this franchise. If you're new, I am. This is absolutely one of my favorite, if not my all-time favorite franchise. Um, I I think I was trying to think about this as we were gearing up to do this. I, I feel like I played the original Metroid on the NES at my cousin's house. Uh, he's the first person I think I knew that that had the NES. Um, you know, I was all of like seven or eight, and you know, it didn't make any sense or whatever. So. Fast forward to uh, uh, Super Metroid, and that's really my, like, indoctrination to the the Metroid uh, mythos franchise, whatever you want to call. Um, And and I was hooked from then on. I thought the gameplay was perfect. Like, a a game like that is perfect. Um, And then it just kept going, you know. uh, I hadn't... Up until maybe about five or so years ago i hadn't played any like the game boy games or their remakes um but uh when metroid prime came out like i couldn't believe they took something i love so much and they made it a a, you know first person they kept you know the feel the uh, metroidvania uh, one half of the metroidvania uh you know and they kept that uh, and it just it blew my mind and it just they just got in my opinion better and better and um, I just love this series so so much. The mythos, the Samus as a as a protagonist, you know, it just, uh, it's just it's great, just great. I can't I can't stress enough. And the music, the music for the game, in my opinion, is just as important as uh, any other aspect of this game, if not more, because you know it's there are po- there's some points where it's uh, you know it's mostly atmospheric, but yet not and then there's parts where it definitely drives you know what's going on and and i think that's just brilliant yeah uh pretty pretty firm agreement with you on all that point uh i first uh, discovered the game through the the posters that came with stuff like uh what's it the uh like that and our old nes games you know i got my system there was the big fold out poster now you're playing with power and you know, I had the, the Nintendo calendars, and I was always enthralled by the idea of Metroids. Oh, this game looks super cool. I finally played it at my friend Steve's house uh, when I was a Cub Scout, and uh, I was like, really, really, the music just hit me so hard. That title screen was like, whoa, that's super cool. Uh, and I just 
I followed it ever since. I, I my friend of mine got uh, Metroid 2 for Game Boy around when it first came out, and I played a bunch of it on his Game Boy, and then I got my own copy uh, when I got a Super Game Boy, and that's how I played through it on the TV, and then Super Metroid blew every single synapse in my brain to shreds. It was a, tr a truly life-altering experience playing Super Metroid. I've, I've spoken at great, great length about my love for that game, and uh, same with you, with Metroid Prime was another one of those, you know, Metroid disappeared for such a long time, and then it comes back, and it's all like, uh, it's an untested American developer, and it's a first-person shooter, and I don't like those. Oh my god, it's Metroid! This is amazing! <laughs> I just, I, I couldn't believe that it actually worked as well as it did. And, you know, Fusion, and I, you know, I've, I've, I've played every game, um, I have not finished every game. I have made, been making the attempt relatively recently to, uh, my, my son and I played through the entire franchise, every single game, uh, so I finally beat the ones that I hadn't beaten before, which were, um, Prime Hunters and Prime 3 I hadn't finished before. Um, and the only other one I haven't finished is, uh, Federation Force, and it's because I don't want to. <laughs> I finally started playing it for the first time, uh, and it is, uh, it's, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, it's um. We just did a whole thing on the SAG, the Stone Age Gamer podcast where we ranked every Metroid game, and we actually put Federation Force at the very bottom of the list because that makes sense. even though it's technically a better game than Other M, because Other uh, M yeah. is really not good, uh, but it's really interesting, and Federation Force is just fine. And I think it's a greater sin to be bland than to be bad yet interesting. So, yeah, I can agree with that. But uh, outside of outside of Federation Force, I have genuine love for every single game in this franchise. Uh, even other M, I, I I I will talk at great length about what I like and don't like about that game. But uh, the music of the Metroid series is is a. Uh, is really really quite special and we have a lot of really interesting tracks a couple of suggestions from our, our listeners and then a bunch of other wacky stuff uh pieced together by me so we'll have a couple of tracks from the actual games and a lot of lot of covers so it's just going to be a big fat fun hairy celebration of the music of the metroid franchise from various flavors so let's get started our first track um comes from well, I just love this so much. I, I talked about on the show uh, not that long ago that I recently commissioned Banjo Guy Ali to do six Metroid covers for a video that I was putting together, and they all came out just unreasonably good. Now, I'm not going to play all six of them for this episode because we only have so much time, and I wanted to kind of you know spread the love out all over the franchise. But uh, I did want to do at least a couple of his his. Uh, his covers for this uh so we're going to start with his cover of the metroid title theme from the nes game it is extraordinary it's also the only one uh that's available on his youtube channel right now so the other ones that we'll be listening to you can only hear on this show so far <laughs> but he's going to eventually make videos for all of them and i can't wait till he does because i want to see i want to see the process of him making these songs like i want to see him playing the instruments because they came out so super cool but this one in particular uh, this was the first one he sent me. It came together a lot quicker than he thought it would, and he just freaking nailed it, man. So here is Metroid title theme, covered by Banjo Guy Ali. Enjoy.
you have it, and of course, of course, accordion for those big, deep bass notes in the beginning, right? Of course. <laughs> I couldn't believe. I mean, I could believe how good it came out, but at the same time, I couldn't because it's just so good. <laughs> I love that take on it. That that pause he does before it goes into the really pretty part was mm-hmm. just. It was unnecessary and so so good. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need to do that, but it just adds that little like, oh, oh that's so good. <laughs> I love it. Very, very satisfact and uh, uh, in satisfaction inducing, rather. Indeed, indeed. L- great instrument choices on all that. I mean, if you haven't really, if you haven't heard Banjo Gaiali's music, you clearly haven't been listening to this podcast very long. No. But if you, uh, if you're unfamiliar with him, he just he does banjo centric slash uh, very acoustic flavored covers of uh, video game tunes and. Boy, this Metroid stuff that he did just came out so cool. Got to agree. I mean, it, I mean, like you know, not only is he a friend to the show, you know, and other Geek Aid shows, um, he's just. And I'm not saying this because he is, but he's just super talented, and it's it's like dripping off of everything he does. So even even the stuff that isn't Metroid related is great. So you, you need to get over there and check that stuff out. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, see it subscribe to his channel, you'll get more Metroid stuff in the not-too-distant future. Uh, but speaking of Metroid stuff on YouTube, uh, the next one is a little, little self-indulgent, but it's a... <laughs> so I have this side project that I work on on YouTube, or uh, I, I was. I hope to get back to it if the kids actually get to go back to school, because um, I just don't have a lot of time to myself anymore, but it's called a uh, Waveback Overplay, where I take two different versions of the same song and I smush them on top of each other to see how they sound. Uh, I recently did Metroid Zero Mission, which was a lot of fun, and uh, so I wanted to just kind of, in the interest of getting a an actual song from the original version of Metroid, you know, the actual game we're celebrating on here, I thought this would be a pretty fun way of, of doing that. So this is the, um, the Brinstar theme, uh, from Zero Mission mashed up with the uh, the NES version, and I think this one, it's not the it's it's my second favorite one of the of the soundtrack that I think worked the best. My favorite one was the uh, Crates Lair, but that's also the most covered song from Metroid. So uh, <laughs> I figured we'll we'll hit Crates Lair with somebody else, uh, and we'll just do this one for for my uh, Waveback Overplay, but. I think, if I remember correct, the uh, the NES audio will be coming out of the left speaker, and the Game Boy Advance audio will be coming out of the right. But either way, it's these two complement each other so so super well. I think it sounds awesome. So let's give a listen to Metroid Zero Mission Overplay Brinstar by me. Enjoy. That's that's the Metroid song. That's the Brinstar song. That was a uh, 
I mean, besides the the title screen from the original game, that was the one that uh, you know you start off the game and first started playing it. Really made me fall in love with the uh, the game as a whole, and it's it's such a different song for the Metroid franchise in general. Like since that game, uh, it's such a more overtly you know, yay, let's go on an adventure yeah. kind of a song, <laughs> you know. And the Metroid franchise, even within the rest of this game itself, has very little music that matches that that tone. So when Zero Mission came out, uh, and we had really more established what kind of music Metroid games feature, uh, and when they were redoing the original Metroid more in the style of Super, I was really curious how they were going to pull off making that song work with the sort of Super Metroid style of music making, and I think they nailed it. Uh, it's they added a little bit of extra stuff to it in the Game Boy Advance version for actually all the tunes. There's like a few extra chunks added to the songs. I had to chop them out to make them match with the NES originals. But um, I really like the way those two versions complement one another. Like uh, the the bass line in particular is a is a has always been a point of fascination to me because it it switches it's it switches its um uh, what's the word I'm looking for the the kind of the, the impact point halfway through the song like it's it, it's it starts off with a very dum da da dum da da dum da da dum and then it switches switches over uh when everything i think the key change goes downward and it's changed over to a do 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 it's it's a really interesting baseline the way it goes back and forth between where its uh primary focal hit is uh and adds that adds an interesting layer of uh, cadence to the song that's kind of a weird tune to begin with. Um, I really like it. So I, and I love the way that they, they mashed up together. Uh, if you told, if you hadn't told me, rather, that this was a mashup of, of two completely different, you know, uh, pieces of music, I wouldn't have known any better. Um, it, it, that, yeah, in the, in the pantheon of um, Metroid music, this is probably one of the most you know, heard, played, you know, famous, whatever. Um, I enjoy it a lot because I feel like it's probably the only bit of music really that shows up in the the franchise that is like that, you know, hopeful and, you know, jubilant if you want, triumphant, whatever. Because, um, you know, the rest of it is, again, atmospheric and, you know, dark. Um, so it's, it's nice to hear that. <laughs> it's nice to think, like, you know... We started this whole journey with with the best of intentions, but um, the universe had other ideas. <laughs> and you know, there's uh, there's there's a decent amount of there's there's definitely joy to be had in this uh, in in this game franchise. And I really think that this song it still it still definitely works. Like it, it especially when in in the the original NES Metroid because one of the things you do so early on in that game is like those really floaty jump physics and when Samus jumps it just you feel like you're soaring through the, the through the air because it's such mm-hmm. a different jump physic than Super Mario Brothers so really it it matches that feel of like the kind of excitement of all right here's a whole new world to explore let let let's go to town and then as you get deeper into Zebus the music gets darker uh I love it Great track. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, speaking of Craig's Lair, we have Craig's Lair coming up next. And this one is one that I'm not overly familiar with. This is just requested by Scion Storm. This is a metal cover of Craig's Lair by a, uh, uh artist group band. I'm not entirely sure, but it's by Family Jewels. And <laughs> uh, it was... It was recommended to me, and uh, I listened to a few seconds and said, yeah, sure, let's do it. That sounds awesome. So I haven't actually listened to this whole thing yet. I'm kind of excited to give it a whirl. So here is the Crades Lair Metal Guitar Cover by Family Jewels. Enjoy.
okay. Um, this this music is definitely more your territory than mine. Uh, let's get your thoughts on this. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, that was effing awesome. I hundred um, percent agree. <laughs> that was awesome. It it's weird sometimes to do a cover and essentially change the genre of you know what it the original is versus what you're doing. Um, so it's it's quite a leap. Um, but it, it's it's absolutely awesome. The kid's super talented. I was just kind of reading his uh, his bio a little bit while we were uh, listening. Um, he can play quite a bit of uh, uh, instruments. Uh, you know, he's he'll say he's a musician before he's a gamer, but obviously he's a gamer. There's no no two ways about it. Um, his talent really lends itself to the original composition of this track. Um, as far as like. <laughs> I, I, now I'm gonna critique it on on, uh, on a metal level. Um, <laughs> it's freaking metal, dude. Like those, <laughs> you know. He, he he beefed it up, double kick. You know, nice solid tight kicks and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you you get you get the heft that comes with like American made metal. Um, it, but his guitar playing and his his uh, what's the word his choice and effects and things it reminds me a lot of like those noodlers like Ingve Malmsteen and Satriani um and which you know it's not necessarily my cup of tea per se but given the original orchestration and uh composition it's absolutely necessary but either way I love this and I can absolutely see this like coming on somewhere and being just like yeah this is yeah, and making that like metal face, like, mm, all right, this is, mm, you know, and throwing the horns up and stuff. That is a, is a great cover. It's an absolutely great cover. Yeah, this um, this really nailed uh, <laughs> pretty much. I don't, I don't know. I'm I'm really kind of at a loss for words. I I'm not great at critiquing metal, uh, <laughs> but it is really this was really fun to listen to. It hit all of the right points with just the right level of um just just the precision involved really is what kind of got me i've heard a lot of metal covers of things that uh Mm -hmm. i feel once you get to the stuff that's really really fast uh like a lot of double bass and stuff like that that gets those really like those you know what i'm talking about there's really staccato kinds of things yeah that stuff can sound very messy and yes, it can also get to the point where it's overdone and it sounds like construction work. And I think it's a really, <laughs> f- it's a fine line, you know, you could, you get to the point where it just sounds like a mess if it's not a hundred percent on and everything here was 100% on. Like yeah. it was just nailed it. That was so much fun to listen to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's no two ways about it though. So. Thank you, Scion Storm, for the request. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to another cover, and this is going to be our second Banjo Guy Alley track of the uh, of the evening, and it is considerably different than what we just listened to, obviously, uh, but I think it is no less incredible, and also with the whole um, really nailing the timing of things and um, the the ups and downs of a song, this is possibly my favorite cover that Ollie sent my way. I don't know. It's really hard to choose, but... So this is a cover of Surface of SR388 from Metroid 2, which, uh, if you remember our Metroid 2 comparison episode from ages ago, this is one of my favorite Metroid tracks, just period. I love this tune, and this is a really, really, really cool cover of it. It's very banjo-forward, which I think is super awesome for this particular track, because it's got such a good groove to it, which is also something that's not super common in metroid songs like a lot of it is very atmospheric and this song is very has a really really good drive to it so um let's give this one a listen here surface of sr388 by banjo guy ali enjoy
Surface of SR388, and I just love that so much. Oh, I'll never forget playing Metroid 2 for the first time, and you know, you start off the game, and you have that music playing. Just really, that that song just got me started. Immediately loving the game, and the rest of the Metroid 2 soundtrack went really bug nuts weird from that point on but that one song has always really stuck with me as one of my just all-time favorite metroid game uh songs and whew, i just love this cover <laughs> i just love it so much you got that rhythm so good all the ups and downs just the i don't know the part where everything like pulls back like they, that happens in the original version you know even though it's just the, the chip tunes but it's so much more pronounced here because he's you know, using real instruments, and it's just so much feels so much more dynamic. And there's, uh, he he tried to explain it to me, and I when I was talking to him about when he first sent me the draft of the song, and I was like, this is this is so good, this almost like extra bass note. It's n it's not an actual extra bass note. Like the original bass line doesn't change quite as much as as what he's playing in in this version of it. So like when it goes. Du, 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 du. Ah, I'm messing it up. I can't. I can't articulate it. There's an extra bass thing in there, and it's so freaking cool. It's okay, man. It'll be okay. <laughs> will it? I don't know if it will. You're you're right. It might not actually be okay. Uh, you know, look, another banger from from Ali. Like, what? One more can you say? But yeah, this track is actually another one that I think of. Uh, I think it gets a lot of coverage too. Um. But not in, you know not in a bad way. Um, and, uh, it, it sounds it just sounds great. It's a it's a it's a great composition that translates well to a lot of other medium or I should say a lot of other genre instruments. You know, in this case, Ollie's doing again a very um, acoustic version. Mm -hmm. You know, very acoustic drums and well. I use the term loosely, acoustic drums. Um, but, you know, that sort of stuff. And and this is one that I've heard a, a rock cover of. I've heard a metal cover of. Um, other, you know, kind of updated synthesizer versions of more modern synthesizers and stuff. Um, not to mention the versions that we covered in the, the Metro 2 episode where we, we had the versions from uh, AM2R and from Samus Returns, which are wildly different. Exactly. So, it, you know, it just... I think it's a testament to uh, to the track itself, to the composition itself. Like uh, like you said, the rest of the soundtrack gets a little uh, wonky, if you will. But you know, great piece from 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 that series, and and just done well. And and yeah, again, I've never heard I think a bad version of this. Mm -hmm. So to me, that says a lot about the actual track itself. Right on, right on. All right, well, let's uh, let's let's move on to our next track, which is a little bit of a an interesting departure. Probably a Metroid song that everyone's familiar with, but uh, probably not this specific version. Uh, the Metroid franchise skipped over the Wii U almost entirely, uh, even though the Wii U is probably the best place to play Metroid games right now because they have uh, the Game Boy Advance games, um, Hunters available to play on your TV, uh, the Metroid Prime Trilogy with updated uh, loading times and stuff. Like, It's the best Metroid machine in the world right now, which is kind of weird um, because it never got its own original Metroid game. But it did get a wonderful, wonderful multiplayer game called Nintendo Land. And uh, this was kind of like a weird me theme park themed game uh, full of... Uh, mini games that are made to show off the Wii U gamepad. Uh, so it's asymmetric multiplayer stuff. And it's still one of the most fun multiplayer games I own. It's so good. 
And the most advanced game in there is uh, Metroid Blast, which is a really cool, like, one person controls the uh, Samus's ship, and then there are other uh, three, I think up to four other players get to run around on foot as, like, their Mies dressed in Samus costumes. And it's like this cooperative <laughs> little shooter thing that's really fun. Um, and it also has a... Uh, has some boss battles in it and like so since it's all like built around theme parks everything looks like it's built like theme park rides so like mm -hmm. all the games are you know like you look at the pikmin game and there's like big pikmin monsters but they don't they don't look like the monsters they look like they're robots that would be at a theme park version of like animatronic the, versions of them yeah like animatronic versions but not even like not even, we're not even talking like Chuck E. Cheese style animatronics. They look like <laughs> like they're made of metal bits and stuff. Like they don't look at all like their counterpart, almost like Lego versions of them, sort of. Like the, it's a really strange art direction, and it works really well. Um, and for this game, they had uh, you could actually fight Ridley and Kraid. Uh, and, and this one in particular is, I think, the only time in the entire series that you have to, uh, if you get all the way to the expert levels at the end, you have to fight Ridley and Kraid at the same time, which is ah. pretty cool. Uh, so this is that game's version of the Ridley battle theme, which is, uh, you know, probably the, one of the more popular modern Metroid tunes uh, first showed up in Super Metroid, and it's a great song, and this is a pretty solid rendition of it. It's you know, it's very orchestral. Um, it's not super different from the kind of stuff you'd hear in Smash Bros brothers but it is a, a version that i don't think is really you know people really hear very often because really who got this far in nintendo land so uh here's ridley battle from nintendo land by ryo nagamatsu enjoy Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
right, so that was Ridley Battle from Nintendo Land, and I, I think I may have undersold it a little bit uh, at the start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was. I, I was remembering it wrong or something before I put it on the list. I forgot about just how freaking cool this is. I, I forgot about. I must have been just thinking of this for some reason right now before the track played with it confusing it for another version of this song because uh, there's a lot of different versions of the song out there especially in uh, in Smash Brothers but I love this version <laughs> it's so good I I really really appreciate the orchestra uh, the uh, orchestra rather uh, approach but then have a, a, the level of synthesizer in there because it kind of in my mind's eye it, this orchestration comes boom 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 and then the uh, the synthesizer kind of spirals out of that you know and it's like oh that's so cool like I hear that's the stuff I love hearing like I, I love being surprised by music especially because you know there's so much kind of uh, foresight in you know you listen to music for a long time you get an idea where things are going oh, okay I see okay four and now we're gonna go to the chorus okay but when when stuff surprises me like that, whether it's um, instrumentation or orchestration or you know composition or whatever, it just goes elsewhere. It's so freaking cool, and when it's done well, uh, it's that much cooler. And that's absolutely what this was like. That that little synthesizer just really made it for me. Yeah, the, the, you're 100 percent right. That synthesizer is what really pulls this together and makes it makes it all that much more special. It's it's such a cool. This is such a cool game. I, I always feel so bad for the Wii U. I I was so happy with my Wii U when it was out, and I do fully understand during the time that it was out, the release schedule being so bare when compared to other platforms was really an issue. But, you know, for me in my life at that time, I didn't have a lot of time to play games, so it kind of worked in my favor that I didn't miss many Wii U games. And the ones that I did miss... Um, were fortunately not all that important. Um, yeah, I didn't get around to playing Devil's Third. I think I'll live. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I did miss Kirby's. Uh, what was the 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 claymation Kirby game on there? That I really hope they find a way to put that one on on Switch or another platform someday. There was this Kirby game, uh, Canvas Curse. It was the uh, sequel to Kirby in the. I can't remember which canvas game it was. It's something canvas for for DS, which was a really really cool game, but it relied on the touch screen because you had to draw these paths for Kirby to roll on. It was a really really clever and creative game, and they made this super awesome system for the uh, sweet sequel for the Wii U. Um, and the visuals were the, this gorgeous claymation. The problem was is that you wound up having to play most of the game on the gamepad because that's where you would draw, and the gamepad was not an HD screen, so you missed all of that detail it just looked mm. like a regular old kirby game but when you were looking at the tv like if you were watching somebody play the game on the, the hd visuals on the tv the game was stunning these wonderful clay graphics but sorry metroid zero uh <laughs> metroid <Yeah. laughs> nintendo land is super cool and everybody should play nintendo land in a group setting at least once in their lives it's one of the coolest multiplayer video games ever made and uh this metroid blast stuff was a uh a blast <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> all right. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna wind things down a bit here. To um, I mentioned these guys. Goodness, when did I mention? That? Probably just last time during the Donkey Kong episode. Yeah, uh, we listened to a Sam Griffin song. Uh, this is the, the classical guitar uh, guy. Uh, this is his group that he does with a partner called Super Guitar Brothers, uh, and mm -hmm. they did a Metroid medley, and Ooh. it's really good. So Inci here's some incidentally, really oh, quickly, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a photo on uh, Family Jewels's page of him with the Guitar Brothers. Oh, really? And <laughs> so I mean, I mean, I feel like that community, the community of um, you know musicians who cover uh, video game music, is small, and they uh -huh. all know each other. So it's no surprise. Yeah, well, it's still really cool. Um, and speaking of really cool, this is a great little, uh, great little bunch of Metroid covers, all a little nice little medley. So. Uh, Nice. S sit back and, and relax and enjoy Metroid by the Super Guitar Brothers. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> you cheeky bastard. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I was I was super cool, right? <laughs> I you know I'm a sucker for for classical guitar and when it's like um, when it's too really talented because I mean you have to be I personally think you have to be really talented to to play classical guitar when it's two people doing it together it, it really just like to me like I'm not one of these people that's very like um, what's the word making myself more important than I really am what's that word pretentious. I'm not one of these pretentious people because, like, I love film and I love music and stuff, but I don't sit around and pretend to, you know, be that person. But, like, when I hear two two musicians who are playing classical guitar together and just, like, to me, that's, like, the dance. It the the Just to have them weave around each other and create this, like, lush and, and wonderful music just with two acoustic guitars and maybe a little reverb. But um, then, and then you take that, and then you put it on my favorite game, and you start making Metroid music from it. It's like, oh, come on, man! Like, <laughs> save some for the rest of us. <laughs> um, their choices uh, for that little medley were fantastic. Such a great, great, great job covering them. Um, and then, of course, the, the the little ending, just that little little ending, like the little playfulness of it is just absolutely brilliant. I love it. Yeah, I mean, Silence is such a weird weird song but such a memorable one so yeah man that's <laughs> i don't even know where to i love this i love it i love it with every fiber of my being it's um the the, the crates layer stuff is great the the just stunningly gorgeous intro mm-hmm. it's all good every yeah every facet of it is just so darn good um i love it and i love them yeah and i appreciate what they do and they bring smiles to my heart all the smiles all the smiles so we've got another uh another hard hard turn here uh from let's see we're going to uh a a request from snasms this is by metroid metal which uh, as you can imagine is another acoustic cover of metroid music oh i'm just (laughs) kidding Uh. it's another metroid uh, a metal one uh heavy metal cover of the prime theme i believe the song is called expansion pack um this is the 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 title theme from metroid prime which is a really good theme so uh yep let's go ahead and give this metal version a listen uh again requested by snasm thanks uh Show us what you got, Metroid Metal. Enjoy.
well. That's metal, man. Yes, it was. I mean... (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot going on there. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um... I, I probably sound like I didn't like it, but I actually really loved it. I just... I don't know what to say. Like, uh, again, it it falls for me into that uh, area, that gray area of metal that I don't personally listen to, of, of being Vay Malmsteen and Satriani and stuff. Um, it, it definitely... It captures that um, prime uh, be, uh, theme, rather really really well and there's a there's that part where there's a weird uh time signature kind of to get to that to get it, but they handle it so well that it doesn't sound clunky um and it flows just well um yeah if 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 everyone on that track is playing live like there's a live drummer and and so forth like fantastic just well done yeah i'm a big fan of the um Oh, darn it, I lost it. I just had it in my head, and now it's gone. I looked at a picture, and then it was gone. What was I it? I hate it when that happens. Oh, right, there it is, the menu. Uh, they they also incorporated the um, the file select in there, which I thought was super cool. Ah, uh, okay. Because um, it wasn't all just the title screen. They they jumped into the... I love that theme. <laughs> when you go to select your file, so good. Fantastic, fantastic work. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very much appreciate the suggestion there, Mr. Snazzums. That was awesome. And as a massive fan of the Prime series, I too am very happy to have heard that. Yes, indeed. Okay, well, we're sticking with the Prime series here. Um, It's probably going to be a very long time before we actually get to a Metroid Prime 3 episode proper. um, Because that, you know, was one of the later games in the series, and we tend to go... You know, more or less in order. So I really wanted to throw something from Prime 3 in here. Uh, And this was one of the more memorable tracks from the game, I thought. uh, And also um, probably the most memorable area in the game for me. Uh, This is Skytown from Metroid Prime 3 by Kenji Yamamoto. This is an original from the game, not a cover. Uh, And I I really like this song. And it really kind of... We've been listening to a lot, you know, a lot of covers and a lot of more melodic stuff, and this really is one of my favorite pieces in the series that's of the more ambient style. So um, let's give it a listen. Here is uh, Skytown for Metroid Prime 3.
because this area um, was really, really interesting. There wasn't... There was a lot of the, the area in the game that's done... Uh, that, that you travel through these, like, I don't know, suspended Jetson style. You know, like the Jetsons houses that are up on the giant stilts. It's mm -hmm. so, like a lot of this area is in places like that. But the way you get from point A to point B is this rail system that you grab onto with your grapple beam. And then yep. you just like, you know roller coaster around which is super awesome and i love the it's a very very um yellow kind of area you know and uh the feeling of this song like there's a lot of like you know sort of like steampunkish almost things going on here like there's a lot of just maintenance robots rolling around doing their thing like not out to attack you they're just kind of there fixing things and there's you know sparks flying everywhere and stuff and this uh song has just a very clockwork kind of feel to it. There's just all these chimes and bells and things happening in the background that don't really seem to match the rhythm <laughs> of the song, but I think it all comes together to kind of form this beautiful noise. Uh, it's such a fascinating track to me. Absolutely. I like uh, all those kind of disembodied uh, clockwork sounds and gears and things. And there's even a the part towards the very ending where there's like just kind of an electric chord note being held yeah, it's yeah, kinda, yeah. It kind of rips and then just sustains for a while, and that's I like that sort of stuff because it's not uh, expected. As I mentioned before, sometimes you get too used to things being kind of on a on a rail, uh, topical, and um, you know when when little things like that pop in, they they excite me as a listener. So uh, this is a track you know i was thinking about it while listening to it i i feel like this could almost have been uh, uh a pick for like a winter episode even though even though it's uh it, it really isn't like the level that it exists in or the area that it exists in isn't there's just something about the um uh what's the word the instrument choices and and the synthesizers being used and things like that that give me that kind of uh crystalline wintry vibe but um nonetheless a, a fantastic track i mean i you know we yeah, listen I can to definitely nothing but you're talking about with the yeah. um the the instrument the, the the wintry kind of feeling i never really thought of that before but it definitely has a i could definitely hear a, a wintry kind of theme poking through there that's that's pretty cool <laughs> I never never yeah. thought of it that way before, but yeah, because I you know, I so I link this so very much to the the um, uh, what's it the, uh, the the actual stage itself like that that very yellow clockworky kind of sound is really what I link it to. But separated from looking at the actual visuals, yeah, it does definitely has a nice a very cold wintry kind of feel to it. It's very very cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Listening, uh, when listening to video game music and listening to video game music remixes and covers, uh, we would be crazy to not include at least something from Overclocked Remix. Uh, OC Remix is this amazing website that just houses hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of uh, video game covers from people all over the world. And uh, this one is one that I've listened to an awful lot. It's a song that I think really rarely gets covered. Um, or really gets really gets a whole lot of attention because it's again from Metroid 2, which was until recently one of the least played uh, entries entries in the entire franchise, and I guess it still kind of is because Samus Returns didn't sell a whole lot either. Um, and I wasn't crazy about the the version that they created of this song for Samus Returns. This, however, uh, is a wonderful wonderful cover cover of the ending theme from Metroid 2. Uh, it's called Anthem of a Metroid Hunter. It's by Big Giant Circles, and it brings me a ton of joy. I, I, I listen to this song. I've God, I don't even remember how old this is. This has been around for quite some time, um, but I think it's a really wonderful cover of a great song. Um, it's got a, a neat little, neat little uh, visual tr audio. Oh, sorry, audio trick at the end to listen out for. So. Let's give it a go. Here is a Metroid 2 Anthem of a Metroid Hunter by Big Giant Circles from OC Remix. Enjoy.
anthem of a Metroid hunter. <laughs> oh, I, the whole taking the helmet off at the end bit is a bit cheesy, but boy, if it doesn't just work for me. I freaking love this cover. <laughs> I freaking love it. Oh, man. I wasn't I love- quite sure what that was at the end. Took me a long time to figure that out, and then I thought of it. I was like, "Oh, I bet that's supposed to be like the sound of her taking her helmet off at the end." Okay, I get it. I like it. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's a uh, this era of um, like early two thousands OC remix stuff. I listened to a ton of this stuff when uh, when I discovered it, and this is one of the ones that really stuck with me. And there's something about like this song. The original version of this song is re- it's really all time for me. So whenever somebody covers it and does a good job, it, it um, really sticks with me. And it's just, this, this isn't one that I hear very often. So um, that this was done with so much love and care that it's, uh, it starts off at the beginning with that um, when you find the baby Metroid, that really, really ambient sound, kind of tune that plays when you find the baby Metroid and you're uh, uh, not escaping, just kind of leaving SR388 at the end. Uh, it was a really, really cool way to start this, and then it trans- transitions into uh, a really elongated version of this song, but um, I, f- I find it just immensely enjoyable. Every instrument choice he makes, every the, the, the way it the, the bass fills it in, it just feels really full, and it has this very specific... Sp- sp- yeah, I can talk. Very Hello. Sp- <laughs> very specific nostalgic feeling for me uh, with these kind of synthesized instrument choices. I, I, I adore this cover very, very much. Yeah, I mean, I'm not very familiar with the original, um, but it, it's, uh, I had said at the beginning, there's not too many, um, I don't know, uh, hopeful tracks in the Metroid series because it's a fairly bleak game, mm-hmm. but this certainly um, comes up as one of those. That definitely ticks that box. Um, a lot of fun, honestly. Like, I, I thought um, I thought the composition was actually really, really well done. Uh, nice flow to it. Uh, it's I, again, having not heard the original, it's kind of tough for me really to go further, I suppose, with it. Mm-hmm. But uh, but all in all, it's a good track. And now that I know that that's the helm, potentially the helmet coming off, I think. All right, I I see you guys. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh, it also has a lot of these like kind of you know almost construction soundy things happening in the background, and I think they're meant to. The original version of this song has a lot of like these strange, whooshy sound effects happening in the background. So I think they're they're designed to kind of emulate that more or less. But either mm-hmm. way, it's it's one of those it's, it's one of those tunes that top to bottom always puts me at peace, uh, and I just I'm happy to share it with folks. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna get into a couple of uh, uh well, this no well, a couple of we've already hit a couple of uh, relatively deep deep cuts, and I really wanted to hit something from this game. This is Metroid Prime Hunters. Um, it's not a super well-appreciated game in the Metroid franchise, and with, with decent enough reason. It it, uh, it doesn't play all that Metroid-y, but there's a lot of good music in this game, and it, it, it is an interesting take on the Metroid Prime format. It's really... It's got some of the exploration elements in it, but more... Uh, it focuses a lot more on the combat and the escapes. Um... There's a ton of escape sequences in this game. Pretty much every time you beat a boss, then you have to escape the area that you're in, um, which is kind of a neat play on you know, one of the hallmarks of the Metroid franchise. Just you know, just kind of focusing on a different aspect of you know part of what made Metroid special to begin with, and expanding on it in a strange, uh, a strange and unusual way. Um, but because I feel like so few people have really played through this game, um, its music does tend to get overlooked. And there's a lot of really good tunes in this game. There are also a lot of really long tunes in this game. So hmm. I wanted to kind of pick something that was a, a a good example of the not exactly ambient, but the um, more calm exploratory stage music that happens in this game. Mm-hmm. So this is the uh, theme from the Vesper Disp- the, the Vesper <laughs> Defense Outpost <laughs> One. Uh, the, from Metroid Prime Hunters by Lawrence Schwedler and James Philipson. Uh, it is, it is, again, it is a very interesting soundtrack. It definitely takes a lot of cues from the Metroid Prime soundtrack, but it is it, it definitely moves in its own direction. So uh, let's give it a listen. Here is Vesper Defense Outpost 1. Enjoy. 
What'd you make of that one? Oh, I can make a hat or a bow <laughs> or a... no. That was very interesting. And I know when people say that was interesting, it's a play way of saying they didn't like it. Um I And that's don't... true here. <laughs> <laughs> right. And this is no exception. Um no. I it would I don't know how to kind of uh, put into words what it is I was feeling while listening to this. Like it almost feels out of place for the Metroid. What game did this come off of again? 
Prime Hunters for DS. Hmm. So the the story you know, of this game is you are you were hired by uh, some sort of like telepathic message went out saying, "Hey, I've got the ultimate weapon here. All you got to do is come get it." So the Fe Galactic Federation's like, "Yeah, so a bunch of bad people are probably going to hear this and go get it. So we're going to hire you to go get it for us." Uh, so the bad guys don't get it. So you're out there, and then you run into a bunch of other bounty hunters who are out to find this ultimate power, uh, which turns out to just be a trap to get this giant monster named Gorilla to pop free, and all the other bounty hunters fell for it, and Samus is like, you idiots, and then you have to fight Gorilla and save the day. But, you know, it's a good time. So there is kind of a more military feel to this, because this is very much like most of the you know, prime game. Most of the Metroid games involve Samus being, you know, dispatched by the Galactic Federation. She's a bounty hunter, and this is her current job. But there's this one takes place on several different, uh, you know, planets and space system, uh, space colonies and whatnot. And this, I think, the Ves Vesper Defense Outpost is a very military installation that you're traveling through. Okay. Well, I've clearly never played it. Um, that being said, it kind of makes sense. Uh, the track. It makes sense that it was on the DS and, and for this kind of secondary game. Um, it's good. It's a good track. I, I'm not, like, blown away by it. Um, it. It That's why I think it's interesting, is that it doesn't feel like a Metroid um, piece of music. Yet it exists in the Metroid universe. Um, it's it's well written. You know, I, I like to... Uh, I like... Excuse me. I'm having... The hiccups <laughs> i liked a bunch of it like i feel some of its parts are better than its whole mm -hmm. um but but all in all it's still it was still good i just very unfamiliar with it yeah it's um it is certainly an interesting piece and the reason i wanted to put it here was specifically because it's so different from a lot of other Metroid Prime music, uh, it does really fit in the area that it's being used in. Uh, I can definitely say that for, I can I can say that. Uh, but uh, I, I I remembered every time I would get to this area and just a lot of a lot of exploration, just just kind of running around a lot of corridors and stuff, looking mm -hmm. for where to go next. And this song playing in the background really just fit to me, like it really worked in my head. So uh, I was very happy to. Uh, Happy to share it, and I hope other more people try to play Metroid Prime Hunters because it's a decent game. It's not amazing, like this song. It's not like the most amazing thing you'll ever play or hear, but it is an interesting piece of the Metroid canon uh, that deserves a little bit more attention. Okay, there you go. Meanwhile, over on, continuing on the Nintendo DS is that other Metroid game that was released on Nintendo DS, Metroid Prime Pinball. I need to grab a copy of that. <laughs> Uh, most of the music in this game is just stuff for Metroid Prime. However, they put this totally weird and awesome uh, rock cover of the Brinstar theme. Uh, this is by... Uh, it's credited to Kenji Yamamoto and Masaru Tajima. Um, I think the Kenji Yamamoto is really... Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know who wrote what on here, but, it, you know, whatever. This track's pretty cool. It showed up in... Uh, Smash Brothers at some point, so uh, it's possible more people have heard this than just the you know eight people who've played Metroid Prime Pinball. But it's one of the best video pinball games I've ever played, and mm -hmm. this is a totally totally rad song. So uh, here's Space Pirate Frigate Brinstar from Metroid Prime Pinball. Enjoy. <laughs>
That is exactly the kind of music you want to play pinball to. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to disagree. Um, it, it certainly reminds me of um, that time, you know, when, when pinballs were really being cranked out, like those that early 90s, like when I was in the arcades and stuff, uh, playing pinballs. Um, I think I pluralized pinball in a weird way that was strange <laughs> anyway um i love all the pinballs joke 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 all okay the pi- all the pins ball all the all the pinsy ballsy thingsy um metroid prime love it anyway <laughs> <laughs> I, I do need to grab a copy of the of the pinball game for the ds i i f- totally forgot that that existed and I need to grab it. So. I think it's become stupid expensive. I'm sure it has. And, you know, you can go suck an egg. Um, <laughs> I hate that, though. I, I really can't stand it because, like, uh, tiny rant. I really hate it because there's some stuff that I genuinely missed, you know, at its height. Like the DS. And I, I love the DS. That was a lot of fun. And now what you know 10 15 20 years later i gotta pay through the nose because i missed something like jesus man come on yeah but, it's uh it's a bummer because this game is is really great and it was not worth much of anything for the longest time like this was a exactly cheap, like find. and and i think it was because probably because the game i'm assuming didn't sell super well and it was such an under the radar thing and then all of a sudden people discovered oh my god this game's great and there's just not a ton of them out there anymore, I guess. But, yeah, it's loose, Ooh. averaging around 42 bucks now. The um, Japanese import is 100 Well, I'm looking on Amazon, which oh, is crazy. Uh, yeah, you're... Oh, no, that's Samus Returns. Um, keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep... I'm just curious now. Yeah, right now my, my listings have it averaging around 42 loose, 96 CIB. Uh, which is bananas, but... You know, a part of it might be the um, a part of it might be that this game came with the Rumble Pack, and the DS Rumble Pack is apparently somewhat sought a uh, somewhat sought after accessory these days. Mm. And uh, copies of Metroid Prime Pinball were all bundled with it, so that might have oh, something yeah. to do with it. So maybe finding it loose uh, without the Rumble Pack might be easier. Either way, yeah, it's I'm awesome I'm seeing it. one copy here, complete, totally complete, a hundred sixty Rumble Pack and everything. It's a lot of dollars. That's a lot of dollars, dude. Uh, here's a thirty a copy for thirty two dollars, just loose. You know, it's ah, uh, god dang it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, we great got a co- song. We, yes, great song. Very it has, silly. Yeah, it, it has <laughs> it has that cheese, that heavy metal cheese, that uh-huh. rock cheese, but it's like just the right amount. You know, like because this game is inherently silly it's it's a, a yeah. metroid pinball game you're beating S- samus around as the ball you know it's it's kind of funny to begin with so this really does fit flawlessly right exactly so you know i think great job on uh putting it together yeah just i don't know it made me smile which is weird because, like, metal shouldn't, rock shouldn't. <laughs> you know, you're like, that diehard metalhead is like, mm, everything's I'm angry at everything. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this one plays and you're kind of like, huh, all right, that's, yeah, man. <laughs> that's funny. That's cool. I like it. But then again, when I get excited about things, I laugh, which makes for awkward moments in my life. Um, but uh, this one kind of made me laugh a little bit. But because it was, it, it touched a part of my. Uh, I don't know, uh, entertainer, listener, audience member, you know, whatever, creative side that was like, yeah. Like, there's a, there's a level of humor to it. It's, it's light. Hmm. Yeah. It's a, it's definitely a lighthearted cover, um, but very, very fun to, to bop your head to and very, very fitting for this wonderful, wonderful game. Yeah. All right, we got two left. We've got... um. This next track here, uh, so a while back there was a Metroid cover album called uh, Harmony of a Hunter, and mm. it was just, it was filled with a bunch of really cool, really cool covers of songs all throughout the Metroid franchise, and on the actual anniversary date, they released a sequel to it, 
Uh, so this was just a couple of days old at this point. Harmony of a Hunter returns, and it is massive. There's, uh, goodness gracious, how many tracks are in this thing? Um, let me, let me, let me look at the site again real quick here. Uh, there are 65 covers. <laughs> That's, um, wow. And they're, stylistically, they're all over the place. It's really, really fascinating album. I haven't listened to the whole thing yet. Because uh, I've only had it for a couple of days, but uh, this one stuck out to me pretty early on. I thought it was fun because it's a a cover of a song I don't hear covered very often, and it is the uh, the fighting mother brain song from Super Metroid. Uh, this is called Grandparent Parietal. I don't know that word. Per P A R I E T A L. Let's see. Let yeah. What does that What does that mean? While you're looking it up, it's the, that's the name of the song. It's from Harmony of a Hunter Returns by Diggle featuring Robert Lima oh. or Lima. So uh, of, relating to, attached to, or denoting the wall of the body or of a body cavity or hollow structure. Relating to the residents in college. Nah. Huh. Uh, Parietal. Parietal. Parietal? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fascinating, uh, and this is a an, <laughs> this is a neat cover oh. of a, of that song. Oh, just so, uh, very quickly, uh, just because it says, "What is the parietal area?" The parietal lobe is one of the major lobes in the brain, roughly located at the upper back area of the skull. Uh huh. So. so it's brain related. Got it. Well, I think I think the word parietal has to do with just a cavity. So, like your chest, your torso is a parietal. Uh, cavity or oh. parietal area if you took your lungs and your organs and everything out I your get skull it. your skull is the same it's, thing if you take everything out it's so, so it's one what? level above mother brain grandparent parietal ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was gonna make a joke about having an empty skull personally but that's much better so <laughs> well well done all right, You're so, welcome for the science lesson, everyone. Yes, thank you. All right, so let's give it a listen. Here is Grandparent Parietal uh, from Harmony of a Hunter Returns. Enjoy.
All right, I feel like you've got some words to say about this one. <laughs> All of them are four letter and monosyllabic. Like, <laughs> what? What did you just put in front of me? What did you just play in the center of my uh, parental <laughs> cavity? Like, what? What was that? That was... <sighs> that song literally, not touched, but like violently punched every one of my musical sensibilities like everything i love in like dirty electronic early nine inch nails like the broken ep like um there was this band out of uh long island for a long time called bile it, it hits all that the oh jesus christmas um like okay so there's this trick in sound design where if you're going to have, uh, and this is modern sound design, because if you go back maybe five or, no, maybe like 10 or 15 years, it doesn't really exist. When there's an explosion in a film and you want it to make a great impact, but you can't have the volume be too loud, it has to be below a certain decibel level, what you do is the second before, the frame before the explosion, you make it go silent. And it's if you're not paying attention for it, it's so unnoticeable. So in this track, in that first section, when it drops off, and then it just comes in like a Mack truck again. That's the stuff I love. <laughs> I love this stuff. The scream, the woman, the woman doing the vocalization for what I can only assume is supposed to be Mother Brain. Gorgeous. Right, that that like kind of coarse screaming noise. Yeah, that actually took me a second. I I think I picked up on it this time. Is that I'm not sure what it's supposed to specifically represent, but uh -huh. it's um. It's replacing that exact same sound um, that's like a like a, a keyboard sort of organ sound that happens throughout the, the course of the song. Okay. Which is super a, a super have... weird take on it. It's like there's a because uh, the, you know the whole chunk of the original Super Nintendo version of the song is that but then it kind of comes in with this very cheesy horror movie like. Yeah. and it really matches that that's what that sound is matching up to and it's such an interesting take on it I, I was this one really like I was listening to this in the background while I was working last night and this one came up and I was like this is the one Matt's gonna like this one I oh got this hands <laughs> I gotta put this down one <laughs> dude hands down you should have played this first and then told me I could have listened to this for the whole episode like you know you take your kid somewhere and you're like here go play with these Legos and stick them in the corner <laughs> I would have I would have been I could listen to this on loop for 24 hours straight holy ish man I need you when this is all over to send me a link to this because I have a friend of mine who was in my first band and he and I share a lot of the same like love for like electronic like beats that don't necessarily you know are four on the floor and stuff something that's like it takes like three measures to get into the groove and that's what this was and he needs the, I'm gonna be like dude this is the stuff like because we we talk a lot of ish about you know we want to get back to creating music even if it's just for the for ourselves or whatever and he he'll send me one or two things now and, and i'm like oh this is great i want to write some lyrics to this i want to pick up my bass and like but you know he's got a full family and you know you know what it is to be an adult sorry oh, guys yeah. to bring the mood down but <laughs> anyway i'm gonna be like dude dude just just don't even put on socks sit down get a towel this is just go for it man <laughs> you have to send me a copy of this holy cow this was so good uh, I just sent you a link to uh, yes. uh, Har Harmony of a Hunter Returns. It is for anybody listening. Uh, the link's in the show notes. It's a free album. You don't have to pay for it. Anymore. Oh! It's right up on Shine Sparkers. You can download the entire album for free. Go nuts. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'm, I gotta get my Mac out so I can download it while we're talking. <laughs> nice. Holy cow. All right, and that brings us to uh, that brings us to our last track uh, before we go uh, before we send you all off on your merry way for the day. And this is another listener request. This one was requested by Alex Messenger. Yay! Uh, and this is such a cool track. And I think we skipped it when we did our Metroid Two comparison. Uh, I I couldn't find the track list for that episode, but I feel like we skipped this one. And even if we didn't, whatever. This song rules. Uh, so this is one of the new songs from Samus Returns. It's one of the last areas in the games, the Chozo Laboratory. It is a... This song 
rules. <laughs> this is such a cool piece, and I, I love getting to this area at the end of the game because it's so... This game is long and somewhat grueling, and when you get to this point of the game, the, when this music comes on, it's so reinvigorating. Uh, it's great. So, Chozo Laboratory, Metroid Samus Returns by Dice Game Matsuoka. Enjoy. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that that didn't top the previous track. However, this track was so freaking cool. It reminded me so much of like um like early Crystal Method and the Chemical Brothers when like techno was big in the '90s and the the mid to the, the early to mid maybe a little late '90s as well. Chemical Brothers and stuff. That was a, just a cool track. Like it. Um, it didn't like overstay its welcome it, it like did its thing in like this great little pocket and like it felt it, it really felt like a newer um uh uh what's the word deposit in the metroid uh musical bank but a a, a well a well received one in my opinion i think i think that was really great i think it works uh on a lot of levels for the metroid franchise i could see you know you could see it uh, in my opinion, in in the environments and stuff, and I, I think it works really, really well. It's a great composition, uh, great, um, great orchestration, just great, great, great. Yeah, this is a. I, I like I said before we uh, before we got into this, uh, listen to this. This was uh, 
one of those real standout moments in this game. Samus Returns is such an interesting game. I loved it. I just absolutely loved it. Uh, I understand the criticisms of it, for sure, and I have a few issues with it myself, but overall, it's a phenomenal game, and it does some really interesting stuff with the world of SR388. Um, it did have to contend with a really excellent, more traditional remake in AM2R uh, that a lot of people played, and, and the fact that it was on 3DS when nobody wanted to play a 3DS anymore, but mm. I really think that if you're a fan of Metroid, playing through this one was such a great groundwork for um, uh, what, what hopefully they're going to be doing with Dread, since it's the same uh, dev team. And if this music that they added to this game is any indication of the kind of stuff we're going to be hearing going forward, I am out of the out of my mind excited. This is such a cool, cool track for this area and for the the late late game because. Uh, Except for it's a big game. <laughs> there's, there's a this one takes a while to get through, uh, longer than most of the other traditional 2D Metroids. In fact, I think considerably longer than all the rest of the 2D Metroids. Uh, and it's it's a blast to play top to bottom. And this was a great great pick. Uh, thank you, Alex, for for picking this one. I loved it. Yeah, absolutely great choice. And with that, it is time to uh, time to wrap it up. That's our show. Thank you for celebrating the 35th anniversary of the Metroid franchise with us. Uh, there's so much more Metroid goodness out there, and I'm so excited for Metroid Dread. I, I can't even can't even put it into words. But uh, that's going to be it for this one. Join us next time for more anniversary goodness as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of F Zero for Super NES. Oh, I used to love that game. Oh my goodness, I love F Zero, and the Super Nintendo soundtrack is my favorite soundtrack in the series. Probably because it's more, you know, video gamey and less butt rocky than the rest of the franchise. <laughs> Not to say I don't enjoy the butt rock in the rest of the franchise, but you know me, I like my more video gamey kind of stuff. Anyway, that's going to be a ball. Look forward to that. We here at the Waveback Podcast are incredibly grateful to everyone who listens, and we love communicating with you when we can. We have a couple of ways you can do that. There's the Geek Aid Discord channel, in which we have a Waveback chat, where we frequently discuss all manner of stuff related to video game music and whatever our next episodes are going to be. We also have a Waveback forum page on Facebook, which you can find by searching Waveback on Facebook. Of course, you can always still send us an email at mail at geekade.com, and while you're at it, check out all our social media channels, which you should totally follow, like, and subscribe to if you haven't already. And be sure to check out all the other great content we are on our site over geekade.com. Um, let's see. Matt, do you have anything fun to plug? How's that, how's that endless D&D game going? <laughs> endless. Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, we, we're, we're still going. Um, you know, summertime uh, does put a cramp in, in, in gathering, but um, I... Oh, where? Oh, the party. Oh, the party. Um... When last we checked, they were uh, attempting to have a parlay with a super large creature that was probably going to crush them. So they did their best to um, be polite and ask politely to move on. But that creature was a jerk, and now they're fighting. So <laughs> when when we join the next episode, they will be rolling round one of combat. And I don't think anyone's going to make it out. So if you like it. D and people, you know, if you like TPK, please check out uh, on Saturdays over at the Twitch channel. It's uh, www.twitch.tv twitch backslash uh, geekade, and uh, you know, watch us all cry. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll go ahead and promote uh, the Stone Age Gamer YouTube channel where I just put together the video that had all that Ollie music in it, um, which is, I'm pretty proud of it. It came out came out pretty good. It's uh, about an hour of me going through my Metroid collection, talking about uh, all the games I have. I have a quote-unquote complete US collection, and I really, really enjoyed making the video, and it's got some great music in it, so give it a listen. Speaking of which, we're going to leave you tonight with the Metroid 2 staff credits. That song that we listened to earlier, that, that OC Remix cover. Well, here's another cover of the same darn song, but in a very different direction. This is another one of the songs I requested Ollie cover because, you know, I, uh, I love this song and there are very few covers of it out there in the world. And boy, did he nail this one as well. So uh, I think it's a, a very fitting way to leave you off. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll talk to you again soon. Good night. Thank you.